Good day. Even as US President Biden seeks to unite the West in a campaign against China, or at least a campaign to contain China, whose power is rising and which the United States has now come to see, correctly in my opinion, as its principal global strategic challenger, it finds that some of its allies are intent instead on pursuing ever stronger relations with China. Moreover, the United States has attempted to use human rights as its main campaigning issue against China, but some of its allies have shown a marked reluctance to go along with this position. And, of course, the biggest topic that the United States produce, uh, has uh, focused upon is the events in Xinjiang province in the west of China, a region um, inhabited by Muslim Uyghur people whom the United States claims are the subject of genocide on the part of the Chinese government. By the way, and to reiterate, and as I have said before in previous programmes, I am not in a position to verify one way or the other what the events in Xinjiang really are, and I'm not intending in this video to be drawn on this point. Pre briefly, and to reiterate again, this is a program about the US attempt to mobilize the so-called collective West against China to make human rights the principal issue around which the collective West coalesces behind the United States and against China. And the treatment of the Uyghur people in Xinjiang province is intended or supposed to be the main issue and talking point behind this campaign. What the United States has found, as I said at the start of this programme, is that some of its allies are less than keen to join in this campaign. And perhaps most interestingly and most strikingly, one which has refused to do so or which has failed to do so is Ukraine. Now, this may sound surprising given the extraordinary amount of support the United States has given to Ukraine, the extent to which the United States continues to speak up repeatedly on behalf of Ukraine, saying that it supports Ukraine's territorial integrity, that it supports uh, Ukraine's claims to Crimea, for Crimea to be returned to itself, and the way in which the United States continues to speak of Ukraine as being the target and object of Russian aggression. The United States, of course, has also provided economic aid to Ukraine, it's provided military aid to Ukraine, and it's leaned upon its other allies, especially its NATO allies, to do the same, and with some measure of success. And yet, on the issue of human rights, and specifically on the issue of the Uyghur people, Ukraine has decided to back not the United States, but China. And it showed that very clearly at the uh, session, the recent session of the UN Human Rights Council, where the United States tried to get a resolution passed against China, condemning China for its actions in Xinjiang, only for 90 states around the world to refuse to back that resolution, including, incidentally, most Muslim states, and with Ukraine initially saying that it supported the resolution, and then backtracking and reversing its decision and informing the UN Secretariat that it's, it wanted its signature from the resolution, the US-backed resolution, criticising China. It wanted that signature withdrawn. Now, why is, the US, why is Ukraine doing this? Why is it, in effect, paying back the United States for all the help and support the United States is giving with it, giving, given to it, by backing the US's main adversary, China, 
on an issue which the United States considers to be of existential importance? Well, the short answer is that Ukraine has worked incredibly hard to try and build up good relations with China. When the Maidan events took place in 2014, Ukraine found itself in confrontation with Russia and Ukraine's principal industries, which had previously exported to Russia, lost their main market. They have found it impossible to make inroads into the Western markets, including the European Union's market, despite the association agreement which Ukraine agreed with the European Union, but it has found a buyer for some of its goods in China. So there is a commercial reason why Ukraine wants to maintain at least a good relationship or at least a stable relationship with China. However, there is a second reason, and that is that Ukraine has, like many other countries, become increasingly nervous about the drift towards the emergence of a Chinese-Russian alliance. Now, with, the, with Ukraine, it is exactly the opposite of what it is with the United States. The United States is trying to draw Russia away from its alliance with China. Ukraine, conversely, wants to draw China away from its alliance with Russia. It wants, or is seeking to isolate Russia as it becomes increasingly conscious that Russia's uh, um, prince, key alliance with China makes it, in effect, invulnerable to Western pressure. So it doesn't want to antagonize Beijing in a way that might cause China to support Russia even more, including on Ukraine-related questions. And the Ukrainians were especially shocked a few weeks ago when a Chinese delegation visited Crimea and started considering investing there and uh, establishing economic and commercial links there. And Ukraine complained and received in return a very strong demarche from China um, informing crime, uh, Ukraine that it should be careful about what it says about Chinese policies towards Crimea, a topic which, by the way, I covered a few weeks ago in another video. So, in light of all of this, the Ukrainians have concluded despite initial statements of support for the UN, US at the UN Human Rights Council, that they cannot afford to antagonize Beijing and that they will not vote against Beijing on Xinjiang-related issues. So the result is that under pressure from the United States, they initially supported the US-sponsored resolution, and then under counter-pressure from China, they have reversed that position and they have now withdrawn their signature and have withdraw informed the UN Secretariat that they no longer support the UN US position on China. Global Times, a semi-official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party, is, has issued a triumphant, even gloating editorial on the topic, or rather not an editorial, um, at least a, an article, though it is by the Global Times team and not by one of its correspondents. And I will read out a few comments from it. China welcomes the withdrawal of Ukraine from its endorsement of an anti-Chinese joint statement made at the 47th session of the UN Human Rights Council, which reflects Ukraine's spirit of independence and respect for facts and conforms to the purposes of the US Charter and basic norms governing international relations. The permanent mission of Ukraine to the UN office in Geneva said on its official website Friday that it has withdrawn its signature from a joint statement on the human rights situation in China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Earlier on June 22nd, during the interactive dialogue with the High Commissioner for Human Rights at the 47th session of the UN Human Rights Council, Canada, on behalf of some countries, delivered a joint statement criticising China in the name of Xinjiang-related issues. 
issues. At the 47th session of the Human Rights Council, more than 90 countries voiced their appeal for justice and supported and echoed China in various ways. The attempt of a few Western countries to smear China on issues related to Xinjiang, Hong Kong and Tibet ended in failure. This fully demonstrates that justice will always prevail and people have their fair judgment. Ukraine's foreign ministry said in a statement on Thursday on celebrating the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the China-Ukraine strategic partnership that Ukraine values its partnership with China and the unshakable foundations on which are non-interference in each other's internal affairs and mutual respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence. So there we are. The Chinese are happy and indeed uh, congratulating Ukraine on its independent position. And Ukraine, under Chinese pressure, unquestionably has gone back on a resolution sponsored by Canada, whose former foreign minister, Christa Freeland, has been the most outspoken supporter of Ukraine um, in, the, in NATO apart from the Baltic states and Poland, and has also gone back on its alliance, its de facto alliance with the United States. What this episode demonstrates, again, is the extent of the West's miscalculation with Ukraine. Ukraine is not a reliable ally of the West. It is a country, a large country, but in some respects, but a small power in others which is fixated on its own problems. It seeks to use and manipulate other countries in order to strengthen its position in the confrontation it finds itself in with Russia. But ultimately, it has no great love even for those countries which claim to be its allies. One wonders why this constant sacrifice in the, United, in the West is being made. Once again, just a few days ago, the European Council extended by a further six months the sanctions, the sectoral sanctions, the European Union has imposed on, China, on Russia in support of Ukraine. One might have thought that Ukraine would reciprocate that gesture by at least standing firm on Xinjiang and China, given how important that has become for the West. But, as I said, direct, narrow interests prevail, and the West on this issue should understand that even a country like Ukraine, so, un so dependent as Ukraine has become, is not going to join the West in this great crusade against China that some countries in the West are intent on pursuing. As for the neocons and the neoliberals in Washington, London, Paris, Brussels and Berlin, perhaps they ought to understand a lesson. Just as they use others, they too can be used and Ukraine is at this moment in time still trying to use them. Thank you for joining me for this program. I look forward to you joining me on future programs of this channel. Again, I apologise for the strange lighting, but I am in a hotel in the Lake District in England, where I'm afraid, as is often the case in hotels, lighting is not optimal. And in the meantime, I would ask you to check out our main channel, The Duran, where I do programmes with my colleague and friend Alex Christoforou. Please also check out Alex's channel. You'll find links under this video. Please also look us up on our other platforms, BitChute, Odyssey, SuperU and Locals. And please also, to the extent that you can, support us via PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar. Also remember to go to our shop, buy yourself the wonderful things that you will find there. And please, if you like this video, remember to press the like button and to check 
your subscription to this channel. And thank you for joining me today on this program. I look forward to you joining me again on future programs. And um, please, as I said, check your uh, subscription and press the like button and have a wonderful day until then.